Hey, welcome to episode three. Oh, hold on. I have music playing in my ear. I totally forgot that I uploaded a music intro to my radio show. It's in my ear. I forgot about it. I don't even know what that's going to sound like on the episode, but we're going to find out. <laughs> Welcome to episode three. I think I called this show pricing yourself out of getting paid. Welcome to my backyard. For those of you that are listening to this, my backyard, I'm in Vancouver. It's this beautiful, beautiful summer day. Hey, Christine. And um, yeah, and I'm outside in my sun hat and my sunglasses because I have Wi-Fi in my backyard and I get to look at the pool. How does it get better than that? Um, I am excited about this topic today and I picked it because I was getting a lot of questions from a lot of people that are in my different energy polls and in my different programs about raising their prices. Um, I do a money class every, a money class and a money energy poll every single morning. Hi guys. Hi Cindy. Um, and sorry, one second. I'm so distracted. I'm going to go share this video. Hey, if you guys want other people to join us, share the video, share it, share it, share it. Um, so I kept getting a lot of questions about like how to raise our prices because every morning we're like talking about money and how to have more money and what do you do to create more money and what do you be to create money and how do you pull energy and all this stuff, right? And so, give me one second, I'm gonna share this. This is so fun about Facebook Live. We're live. Hi, Celine. Hi, you guys. I'm glad you're here. Um, so what is the deal with session pricing? Like, you know, if you are an access consciousness person, then you've heard it before. You get to charge what's fun for you. Now, I don't know why that's not a more popular conversation in the world, but the popular conversation in the world seems to be you find out what other people are charging, you compare yourself to them, see if you, you judge yourself to see if you're as capable as that other person, and then you base your pricing on that. That's basically how we do pricing in the world. And um, when I was first starting as a certified facilitator in the, well I, well, I started as a buyer's facilitator and I was just coming out of um, being a landscape designer. So, I mean, that's how I'd done it in the landscape design world, right? You look at, I, to find out what to charge, I had no idea what to charge. I didn't have any reference points for it because I'd been a restaurant owner and I jumped into landscape designing. So I'm like, how do you charge? So I went on other people's websites and looked at what they were charging and based my pricing on that. And um, that's fine. Uh, it wasn't super interesting for me, and I didn't have the tools at the time, and so I had to judge myself quite a bit because you went onto some landscape designers' websites who'd been doing this a long time, and they were like specialty landscape designers, like they didn't do the average landscape, they, and, uh, and you found out their prices, and they were way more interesting. But then you had to judge yourself because I was brand new in the industry, uh, so I couldn't charge that much, but I didn't want to charge that much, so I had to go like the amount of thinking that was involved in creating pricing for my landscape design services was insane. And um, so then I dropped landscape designing and I jumped into access consciousness and I became a bars facilitator. And, and the first question I asked was like, what do you charge for sessions? You know, well, charge what's fun for you. That was the most annoying thing I'd ever heard in my whole life, charge what's fun for you because I didn't know what that meant. And of course, it doesn't mean anything. It means what's fun for you, <laughs> but I didn't even know what that meant. So when I first started doing sessions, I charged zero dollars because I just wanted to get my hands on as many heads as I possibly could. And then I think I upped it to $40 and then I went up to $80. And so it, it progressed and got more expensive, expensive as I went. Um, but I realized I was living in a small town at the time when I was a new bars facilitator and I raised my prices to $120 and that was like a lot. And I had clients at the time regularly coming and I let them know, hey, I'm raising my prices. But so if you want to, if you want a package deal at this price, at this other price, you can buy a package, but otherwise they're going up. And so I played with it. Um, because the truth is that there's a, there's a number of truths in this whole conversation and I'm probably gonna be really out of order with all of them, so we'll just zigzag across the topic. Um, one, of the, one of the first truths is that there is no price for you. You're priceless. And as cheesy as that sounds and as many Hallmark cards has been made about it, it's actually true. You are actually, you don't have a price. So 
So the thing about charging what lights you up is that when you go to do bars on somebody, you have fun doing it because you know you're getting this much money at the end and you probably like running bars, right? So charging what's fun for you has to do with the amount of joy that you receive from doing sessions. Now, I love bars. And for those of you that are brand new to Access Consciousness, bars are 32 points on your head where when you lightly touch them, they release all the shit you've got going on. So no matter what that shit is, it can be physical shit, it can be mental shit, it can be emotional shit, whatever the shit, it lets all that go. And you just, you feel better or you feel different. And most of the time you feel better. And, and we always say that worst case scenario, you're, uh, you'll are you feel like you had a great day at the spa or a good massage and the worst and the best case scenario is your whole life will change. And I've had people come to me for bars that have had all different kinds of different experiences. It's everybody has their own thing. Um, where was I going with that? Oh, so I love bars, but I'll be honest with you. After a while, I got bored with bar sessions because really, I mean, you're sitting there for about 90 minutes and you're really just being present with somebody's body, which is amazing. And I, Crystal, got bored. So I had to charge more to do those sessions because it was the receiving of the money and, and what I knew I was creating with that session in this person's life and with the money that was contributing to my life that made it fun for me. So tip number 2.5 is you have to know yourself. You have to really be willing to know yourself and really what's true for you. Um, that's So if receiving $40 a session is fun for you, then fucking charge it. There's so many people out there that are gonna get free and conscious and amazing results from that $40 bar session. If $40 makes you feel like poo on a warm day on a sidewalk, you may want to raise your prices. Now, when you raise your prices, there's going to be stuff that comes up. All kinds of stuff. We're going to have all kinds of interesting points of view, very likely, that come up. Like, I can't charge that much. Who am I to charge that much? Nobody's going to pay me that much. Who's going to pay me that much? Everybody in this town only charges this much for massage and everybody in this town. And if I charge this, then I'm the highest price in the whole town. And who am I to charge that much? And, but, and then you'll go into justifying your points of view. But I'm magical and I know that my massages are different than other people's massage, massages so I, I can charge that much which means you actually don't really buy that you can charge that much and um, you're really trying to defend your point of view that you don't really buy into, that you really don't, aren't really choosing. <laughs> it becomes a bit of a schmuzzle. And so I wanted to offer you some tools for the schmuzzle. The first thing, every time you choose to level up your life whether that's raising your prices or going to benevolent capitalism or becoming a certified facilitator or moving into a bigger house, you will tap into a universe of points of view. I have no idea why that is, but it is. So it's very similar to when you like walk into a grocery store or you walk into a gym and all of a sudden you feel fat and like you've never worked out before and like you can't do this and like why are you even here you know all those points of view that come up when you walk into a gym or a grocery store there's something that goes on that when you choose to go in a direction you tap into a universe of of, of that energy of, of, the, of the myriad of energies that are in that field right so how many points of view do you think people have about raising their prices or not raising their prices one or maybe 15 bazillion <laughs> Okay, so I was at a um, I was at a night market the other day. Um, John and I went for wings and beer, which is one of my favorite things to do at this particular place. And there was this night market set up at like five o'clock, and all these vendors were out selling their stuff. And it was fascinating because you had all these brilliant creators in one room. One had hot sauce. This one did fedoras. This one did little. There was a lot of jewelry vendors. And I was so, it was so cool to like walk around and perceive everybody's universe. And there was this one, I was, I was in the process of buying this cute little thing that I'm going to send off somewhere really cute because it's so cute. It's so cute. <laughs> and right next to this really cute little shop thing was this other lady. Now, she was an older lady. She was probably in her early 70s. And she had this series of little jams on her table. And I knew that those jams were awesome because this lady has been cooking for a long time and there was 
the only one way that this particular lady, after I looked into her universe, would be offering her jams, and that's if she knew they were awesome. And she'd had 18 grandkids say, you should sell these. So one day she did. She got a table together, she put her jams together, and she put them on the table. Well, as I was purchasing this other thing and I was observing her world, I realized that, that she had, I looked into her universe and I was like, wow, she doesn't think her jams are worth anything while desperately trying to get $6 a jar. She really, really, really wants people to know that they're really, really good, but she can't actually look anybody in the eye, so there's no buy-in on her part, and she's not really enjoying the process. It's a little bit more like going to the dentist and showing up and going, can I have the money now, please? <laughs> I have to ask for this because apparently I can't just give away my jams for free. But what I'd really like is for you to enjoy my jams, but I can't really say that and I don't really know how to talk to people and this is really uncomfortable. Could this just be over right away? <laughs> and I was like, that's that. That's what we do with our prices. That is exactly what we do. We put our shit out into the world and we're like, I really am supposed to ask for money, but I really don't want to ask for money because I really don't want to, I don't want to have to ask for money because of I am magic, but I don't know if you know, I can't describe my magic to you. I'm just am. Nobody can fucking choose our shit. <laughs> and the, and the only reason actually she got a sale that day for me, cause I was, I just asked the question, I'm like, what amount of money would change her world? What could I purchase from her that would actually give her the space of a different possibility and so I went over and I bought some stuff um, but if it wasn't me doing that she couldn't actually receive what she seemed to be asking for and that's a huge 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 thing like can you receive what you're asking for are you willing to get into your ask and go yeah, can I have the money now, please? Like, I am, this is so magical. Like, how much do you charge? I am $500 an hour. It's like the most magical work you've ever experienced and you are never gonna be the same. If you are willing to be that energy with what you charge, how many more people could show up? And, okay, so, that, so there's that part, right? Sorry, I gotta keep track of the time. I'm gonna just talk my face off. I still have 17 minutes. <laughs> So there's that part with what you charge already, right? And then it's like, okay, but when I raise my, so like her jams are intensely magical. Like I tried one of them, I'm like, wow, that's amazing. She could charge 30 bucks for that jam. Guess how many more jams she would sell if she charged $30 a jar? I don't know how many, you don't know how many, but what I know is if I walked over to that table with a woman sitting in a chair like this, just sitting there with $30 jams, I would want one. What the fuck is in that jam would be my question. So what would that price create in my world? Question. Like what is in that jam? Is it dragon jam? Does it have diamonds at the bottom? I have to know. I am going to buy that jam right away. And all she'd have to do was sit there and just pull energy and charge $30 for a jar of jam she would get it. Guess who wouldn't buy that jam? All the people who think that jam, they're doing computation, all the people who don't function from possibility. You know who she would attract with those prices? All the humanoids would be like, I have to know. What, what do you, how do you, am I? And she could make up a little card, you know, that would be like magic jam. <laughs> or even better, with the Alice in Wonderland thing, you know, where you could, you, um, on one side, if you eat, if you eat this jam from the right side, you'll grow bigger. And if you eat this jam from the left side of the jar, you'll shrink. <laughs> Do you see what I'm saying here? Are you getting the energy? Are you getting the level of creativity that you could actually be with what it is that's fun for you to charge? So like my rates are $500 an hour. I remember when um, my rates were $120 an hour and then, <laughs> and then I stopped doing so much bars and I was more doing like online sessions and stuff like that. So. Uh, I was getting into, I was doing the sort of fake it till you make it, you know, that whole thing. <laughs> Where you're like, how much do you charge? I charge $225 an hour without actually looking them in the face or claiming it, owning it, acknowledging it. You know, I'm, I'm $250. How much do you charge? $225 an hour. How much do you charge? 
$225 an hour? Sorry. <laughs> right? <laughs> Thank you for sharing this. I'm really grateful. Um, and so that started creating a lot of awareness because I was being this like apologetic energy with what I was charging and I was noticing people couldn't choose it. And so I started to change it. <laughs> Hi, Megan Bergfist. I started changing it and I started going, what energy, space, and consciousness can I be to charge $225 an hour with ease? And do you notice that in the energy of that question there's also a choice? No, what can I be? What is possible here? What is not what is it going to take from like, yeah, what's it going to take to raise my prices, which isn't actually a question, but like choosing it and going, yeah, what's it going to take for me to really claim, own, and acknowledge that this is fun for me and this is what I charge. And now when people ask me my rates and I'm 500 an hour, I'm like, yeah, I'm 500 an hour. And I was like, it doesn't work for everybody. So like if you're looking for somebody to lower price point, I can totally refer you to my friends. But guess who chooses to work with me at $500 an hour? People that are ready for fucking change right now. And guess how long our sessions take? Probably 15 minutes. Because when you show up at that price point and you're ready for change, it occurs. <laughs> All you need is a couple questions and a little bit of hoo hoo hoo. And you are in a different space. And so am I going to be raising my prices? Yes. Why? Because it's fun for me. You know the other thing that's really fun for me is getting more money for less time. I really like that. And guess what? Money is not significant. Money is an energy. And I want to read you something from Blessed Possibilities. So in your world right now, it might seem really significant, but in reality, it's an energy. And the lie that we've bought into is that in this reality, in this world, we have to do an exchange rate that's fair. That's the lie. It's not true. People choose things that are way beyond their comfort zone all the time. But when we buy into a point of view and we buy into the exchange rate, guess who makes it real? We do. We align and agree with that point of view and it becomes reality. Every time you create a point of view, it creates your reality. So I want to read you this out of Blessed Possibilities. So this is this book here. I know it's backwards. Um, amazing fucking book if you haven't read it yet. And it's this section on page 46 called Exchange Rate. Gary goes, hi, Alexandra. Gary goes, um, you've made it vital to have an exchange. Were you taught by anybody in your life that you must always put in an exchange? She goes, yeah, on the surface, it's so that I don't get taken advantage of or used. Stop, stop, Gary said, you were taught that there had to be an exchange rate for everything. And she goes, oh, I'll say yes, because you're saying so, but I don't know that cognitively. I, I don't remember times when that was specifically taught to me. Gary goes, when you were a little kid, it was give mommy a kiss because I am so good to you and because I love you. Give me this because I am this. Oh, okay, I got it. It's not just me. It's done to everybody. Gary goes, yes, I'm not doing this just for you. <laughs> there are many people in the room who need to look at this. So here's what he said. How many of you were convinced that you were never enough? Your exchange was never enough for the people that you were with. You are never enough for the people that you were with. That lack of generosity in their world becomes what you think determines your exchange value in a system of reality. Everything that is times a godzillion where you destroy and uncreate it all. Right, wrong, good, bad, pop, pop, online, charts, boys and beyonds. You had somebody forcing down your gullet that you had to have an exchange rate. Oh, you have a question. Go, Jackie. I'll keep reading. You ask your question. Keep going. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so you have to look through judgment to determine whether there is an adequate exchange. Did you hear that? You have to look through judgment to determine whether there is an adequate exchange. You have to judge yourself completely to determine whether or not what you're charging right now is right, good, perfect, or correct. Guess what the question of what would be fun to charge does? It takes you out of judgment. You can't reference point fun. I don't know, in this 10 seconds it's fun to charge 500, in the next 10 seconds 2500 feels fun. You can't reference point fun. Mm -hmm. Okay, so he goes, so you have to look through judgment to determine whether or not there is an adequate exchange. And she goes, okay, can you be specific? He goes, hold on, I'm getting there. <laughs> um, you've tried to make an exchange rate that doesn't actually apply to the people that you're functioning with. You keep trying to apply it to everybody and everything around you, and it's not applicable to everybody and everything. Everything that is times a godzillion, will you destroy and uncreate it all? Right, wrong, good, bad, pot, pot, all, and shirts, boys and beyonds. 
What is your three-year-old nephew's exchange rate with you? His exchange rate with me? Yes. There is no exchange rate. That's right. I would give and do anything for him. I know. The exchange rate is his gift of being. His being contributes so much to you that there is no exchange involved. That's why you'd do anything for him. What if NK was that contributory to you? Well, he is. I know that, but you don't. And he doesn't know. Well, that's true. He definitely doesn't know. I'm hearing all the big notes of this conversation, but you're also hitting a lot of subtle notes. Yeah. What have you made so vital about possessing exchange that keeps you from enjoying being? Hmm. Exchange is what holds the whole monetary system in place. Gary goes, no, it doesn't. That's what you've been taught and told. You bought a lie. The exchange rate is not the thing that holds monetary reality in place. Well, it's an aspect of monetary reality. Not really. If you're willing to pay whatever the rate is, that's not an exchange. It's a choice. You've got to get the choice in monetary reality, not the exchange rate. This is where you're buying out of the phenomenons of money. You're not seeing that money is merely a choice that can create a different possibility. You're seeing money as what you have to do to get what you want. That's not what it is. So what have you made so vital about possessing exchange rates that keeps you from the gift of being? And I love this. It, he goes, you're not seeing that money is merely a choice that can create a different possibility. And that's what I want to invite into this session pricing conversation. Because when you choose and you price yourself at a rate that's fun for you, you give the rest of the world the choice for a different possibility. When you don't buy into any more the exchange system, the, the lie that we've been told that the monetary reality is based on an exchange, when you're like, that's an interesting point of view, I have this point of view, what can I charge that would be fun? You present the world a different choice and a different possibility. And as far as I know, we sort of all got to do in this work because we wanted to create something different. Let me see if I can get to Jackie's question. I won't be able to read all of this, Jackie, just so you know, I can read four lines. I had a client the other day um, for quit smoking, and Jackie's a hypnotherapist. I told her my price was 500 bucks. She came for the session and then went into, why are you charging so much? I've done hypnosis in the, can't read beyond that. I was shocked, surprised, and told her she was free to leave. So my question is, where did this come from? Um, it's a couple things, guys. When people question your prices of why are you charging so much, they're judging you. <laughs> I just look at her and go, because it's fun. And if you want a cheaper practitioner, I can refer you. That's all. When you have a point of view about something, people are going to pick up on it and nail you to the cross with it. So my invitation to you, Jackie, would be, what is your point of view? about how much you charge. How many points of view do you have about what you charge? And would you be willing to destroy and uncreate them? An interesting point of view, I have this point of view about anything around what you charge, so that when somebody says something, there's no charge on it for you. You're just like, oh, I charge 500 because it's fun. I love getting that much money. I love inviting you to the possibility of choosing more for your life, and charging more does that. What would it take for you guys to have your own back? in what you charge. And where do you quit on yourself as soon as somebody else has a point of view? Where do you quit on yourself? And is that working for you anymore? It's way more fun to be the rich bitch. <laughs> it's way more fun to have no point of view about it and just go, oh, I just love charging that much. It's really fun to receive the money. And I love what it invites you to. Because paying $2,000 a month to coach with me, like every single person that has chosen that has gone on to create big businesses. I'm sorry. I'm sorry I charged you that much. I'm sorry that I'm going to be charging more in the future, I think. No, I don't, not at all. Like, should I be sorry about that or should I actually celebrate what that is? And I'll end with this. Like, I'm going to Benevolent Capitalism this weekend, and that's a $10,000 Access Consciousness class. And I didn't choose it for the first time it came out because of money. 
and I didn't want to demand it of myself. I didn't want to create it, and I had money excuses for it. But this year I chose something else, and I'm so grateful to my friend who instigated it. And um, I leave on Wednesday to go to, Benevo to, go to this class, and, and um, I love that Gary is charging that much for this class, because you know who's going to be at this class? The people that are really, 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 really interested in having a very different conversation, which means that we can talk about things in this class that we couldn't talk about at a bars class. We can have conversations that we wouldn't be able to have because of the money he was willing to charge. I'm so grateful for that. I'm so grateful to have created going. The ship is very grateful too. So when you are finally willing to charge what is fun for you, what's congruent with the scope of who you be, um, you get to invite the world to choosing something different too. And you get to invite yourself because the more you like level up in your own world, the more you get to get out of all your points of view and all your judgments about that, if you choose to. Or I mean, you can let them stop you, but that gets kind of boring after a while. I don't know, it's like way more fun to have a pool in a Mercedes. <laughs> Amanda, I've had a difficult time choosing a price for my bar sessions. Where can I start? What questions can I ask? You can start by watching this video from the beginning because I talked about that. Seriously, I actually talked about it in great detail. <laughs> cool. So if you guys like this, if you're still struggling, if you know that you'd like some facilitation around this, I'm doing a one call tomorrow. And if you're watching this in the future, the call's already over. <laughs> but if this is a now thing, I'm doing one call tomorrow. It's a 90 minute call, it's $100, um, which is an invitation to you that if you really want to change this, it's not a $10 call, it's a $100 call. Let's change it. What would it take for you to invest in yourself enough that you actually have your own back. And you don't have to buy calls to do that. It's just follow the energy. And this is this is this goes for my call or anything else you're ever choosing. And this is what you invite people to when you raise your prices is, what will your life be like in five years if you choose this thing? What will your life be like in five years if you don't choose this thing? And um, yeah, and if this conversation contributed, just share it. Let's Let's create something different. And you know, gosh, you know, if we were actually willing to be the trailblazers that we are, the harbingers of a different reality, we would be setting the tone for pricing. So where have we made this reality's reality of pricing the, the standard? And where could we be willing to actually change it and be the badass creators that we truly be? I adore you guys. I will see you next week. Share the video. Bye.